Please forgive me if I speak kind of fast during this particular research, but this research is truly exciting. And the primary reason is this. Every once in a while, there is research that comes out that basically challenges popular perception. Perception which is often mistaken as being fact. In this case, what is an aging brain? We're often told that basically as a person grows older, that the ability to learn declines. Or I should say that's a popular perception. However, the researchers here challenged that belief. And what they discovered was incredibly fascinating. All the researchers said was this, let's bring these adults, raise their expectations to these adults, and give them three, four, five different subjects to learn at one time, i.e. elementary school, high school, or college. They raised the expectations instead of lowering the expectations. And what they discovered in such an incredible short time, according to this chart, which will make sense in a few minutes, was fascinating. We're not talking in combination or parallel with any drug, supplement, food, or anything else. We're just talking the power of learning or challenging yourself to learn multiple things at one time. So, what is an aging brain? Well, maybe there could be environmental factors which can erode cognitive ability, but really we have to investigate that subject more in depth as time goes on and we have a growing older population. To proceed with the research as follows. Older adults daunted by a new task, learn three instead. Learning several new things at once increases cognitive abilities in older adults. According to new research, after just one and a half months, learning multiple tasks in a new study, participants increase their cognitive abilities, cognitive abilities, to levels similar to those of middle-aged adults 30 years younger. We're not talking age, per se, of a 30-year-old. We're talking of increasing the cognitive abilities back to where they were 30 years ago in about a month and a half. The control group members who did not take classes showed no change in the performance. And why should they? because they weren't challenged or learning anything, so there's no reason for the brain to do anything. To proceed as follows. The natural learning experience from infancy to emerging adulthood mandates learning many real world skills simultaneously. For the researchers asked adults 58 to 86 years old to simultaneously, simultaneously, please forgive my mispronunciation, to take three to five classes for three months. About 15 hours per week, similar to an undergraduate course load. The class included Spanish, learning to use an iPad, photography, drawing, painting, and music composition. The participants completed cognitive assessments before, during, and after the studies to gauge working memory, such as remembering a phone number for a few minutes, cognitive control, which is switching between tasks, and episodic memory, such as remembering where you parked your car or left your keys. After just one and a half months, participants increased their cognitive abilities to levels similar to those of middle-aged adults 30 years younger, which we covered previously. Control group members who did not take classes showed no change in the performance. Here's the part which is the kicker. The participants in the intervention bridged a 30-year difference in cognitive skills, or I should say cognitive abilities, after just six weeks and maintained these abilities while learning multiple new tasks. Now, we go back to the slide. There is your improvement. All that improvement took place was in six weeks. Imagine if a person's in school for six months or a year. This really raises interesting questions in regard to employment, uh, in regard to maintaining, retaining older adults in the workforce because the perception is when an individual is older, they don't think as fast as the younger adults coming in. When in reality, it's because our expectations are so low that basically we're seeing what we want to see. To proceed as follows. This, we're going to go to the full study. And I'll read you this one uh, main part because it's very important and it does go into expectations. In general, having higher expectations for children has been known for decades to have an important effect on cognitive and functional abilities, as well as self-efficacy and motivation. According to the researchers, we have proposed that our current expectations for being a functional, 
successful older adults are relatively low compared with what we expect of emerging adults, children. The intervention from the present study raises the expectations for being a successful older adult to include willingness to simultaneously learn many and any new difficult skills. Our intervention extends prior work on staying active, use it or lose it, as quoted, and prior cognitive engagement interventions, including learning only one skill at a time. Again, quoting the researchers. Our results demonstrate the feasibility and potential of intense learning experiences in older adulthood akin to those encountered by younger populations. Perhaps learning new real world skills, real world skills, not world world skills, is not merely one optional way of staying active, but rather is an integral part or integral factor for cognitive growth and functional dependence later in the lifespan. Future studies on this topic may find that such an approach may be effective at promoting cognitive growth over the long term in older adults to mitigate, delay, or even prevent general cognitive decline later in life. Now, the researchers did quote that this was a smaller group, so what's called the power factor or power rating for those in biostatistics uh, may not be high enough uh, for them to make any generalized uh, outcome statement saying this is always going to happen in this case. So hopefully they repeat the study in larger groups. However, with that in mind, the outcome compared to the control group is pretty promising. So to think about it, when you have an older population and you have an older workforce, it would behoove companies, for example, instead of saying, hey, they're older, their cognitive abilities must be declining, to reevaluate that and say, hey, we have older workforce, I know an older workforce, that has huge amounts of experience. And on top of that, they could learn just as fast as the younger population if the expectations are raised. That makes an older individual in employment, 50 or older, 50 whatever, just per se without adding publisher bias, an incredibly valuable asset which many companies may be overlooking. And to top it all off, think of it this way. If part of our healthcare crisis is cognitive decline, then maybe, just maybe, subsidized in some way the education of adult learners could be an incredible way of reducing healthcare expenditures in the future. But in any case, basically make it what you may, we really have to ask ourselves, what is an aging brain? Because I think more so than not, it's environmental factors are playing a role in what we perceive as aging when it's actually damage due to poor diet, pollution, so on and so forth. But that's for future research to determine. In any case, challenge to popular perception, great study. The DOI citation will be listed, links to the study will be there. Uh, it goes through all the testing that they utilized in this particular group. Uh, so if those want to re replicate the study in a larger group in the future, albeit they can follow the same parameters if need be, but it'll be, all be there for you. Again, Ralph Trichana signing off. Look forward to see you all once again in seven days. And thank you very much for listening and look forward to seeing you then. Catch you then. Bye.